very quick rotation constraint overview. Sometimes you want something to be able to move without using extra fizz bones to save performance. One strategy you can utilize is you can have some body parts utilize fizz bones and then other body parts utilize rotation constraints in order to copy those same transforms. Another method that I see rotation constraints used a lot for, for example, is like the legs in this avatar. There is a fake pair of legs that are more set up in this digitigrade fashion and a real pair of legs that this rotation constraint is pulling from in order to uh, fake the look of this digitigrade system without making the IK struggle to understand what is going on and messing up in full body. More in-depth explanation of how this works would be to show off these uh, leg constraints. These rotation constraints, when you try to move the bone on its own, it will not move. Any locked rotation constraint will not be able to manually be moved in any way. It'll only move, or oh, not be rotated in any way. It'll only rotate when the parent bone has been rotated. So in this case, the parent bone for this constraint upper leg is the upper leg bone. Here's the upper leg bone in movement, and you can see that the, the constraint upper leg bone moves with it. Here's the lower leg bone. So you can see, same thing. Foot. Toe. However, these are not the real avatar's legs. Here's the real avatar's legs. These green bones right here. These gray bones are the constraints. The constraint legs. This is to keep VRChat's IK happy in full body, especially. So as you can see in the hierarchy, chest flare 02 has a fizz bone in it, and chest flare left and chest flare right are another set of bones that you can see they move when I move them with the uh, rotate tool and the inspector. And I'm just hitting control Z to make sure those go back into place after I do that. Um, and so if we wanted all of these to move together, but only utilize this one fizz bone to save on performance, one thing we could utilize is a rotation constraint. So what we'll do here is we will set up a rotation constraint on both chest these chest flares on the left and the right and we will add sources to each one one thing that's important right now make sure this, uh, these values here under constraint settings are unlocked you do not want these locked yet until you have your sources in place uh, because otherwise it'll cause distortion that can be hard to undo sometimes i do not know why this is why it's so hard to undo um, I will likely run into this issue later. So, we want to pull weight from the, ch we want to pull a rotation from the chest flare bone, the one that is actually affected by a fizz bone. And then we also want to pull weight from, there's a bone right here called armpit. You just have to find it, because it is not part of the shoulder. armpit. So we're pulling weight from that and we are also pulling weight from armpit so that it kind of moves along with the body. It's not just 100% following this but with this one bone. So we're just putting the corresponding ar armpit in. Since this is the right chest flare, we're putting a right armpit in. All right. Now that those are in and your constraint settings are unlocked, you can make them active. 
on both arms. Now don't test anything or play anything until you've locked both of them after you activate them. Because when you activate them, these rotation at rest and rotation offset values are going to change based on what your sources are. And if you lock and activate too soon, the rotations are going to change and you are going to end up with a very weird value. Uh, this also happens, for example, if you were to copy this component as it is now and paste it onto another object, it, w it has these locked stored values that it will apply to that object. And so it will rotate your crap and turn it around and make it very difficult to undo again. So. Wait. This is how much your rotation constraint is going to affect the value. Right now, the rotations are mainly apparented from the bone above it. So from chest pair one. And that is 100% where it gets its rotations from. Now, its rotations are being replaced 100% with a 50-50 mix of what's in chest, the rotation values of chest flare 2 and the rotation values of armpit R. If you want it to be more one weight than the other, you could change the ratio here. For example, if I were to set this to 0 0.5, it is now pulling more weight from armpit than it is from chest flare, 0 0.5 times the amount. So it's basically pulling, let's see, I'd be about two thirds the amount of weight as it would be before, uh, something like that. Don't, don't trust my math. And as you can see, as I change these constraint settings, it's moving as well. So you'll just want to be careful when you're changing these settings. You usually want to change your sources before you lock in. In fact, that looks like it's a little fucked up. So let's turn that back in place. There we go. So in play mode, just to kind of get an idea of how this is looking. Clicking at the armature and moving the entire avatar around. Hmm. Interesting. So, these left and right fluffs are kind of popping in and out of place. Which means that, hmm, we probably did not pull from a good bone. The angle of this bone is probably not very compatible with uh, where the angle of this uh, chest fluff bone is, and it's probably turning it inside out. Oh, let's try something else real quick here. We are just going to rotate the shoulders to kind of get that armpit. Mm. I think the issue is, is that we need to be using armpit instead of shoulder or shoulder instead of armpit. So let's change this up. In order to keep the values from being, getting majorly screwed up from unassigning it to the armpits, we are going to deactivate it. We are going to unlock it. We're going to do this to both of them. Then we will be putting the shoulder, shoulder left, shoulder right. Then we will activate, then we will lock again. Activate, lock again. And this way, let's see if this works better. Sure looks like it. You can see that these other pairs of fluffs are just gently moving with the fizz bone that's right there. And also, if we move the shoulder, you will see that these fluffs are also now moving with the shoulder. In fact, I think it's moving with the shoulder a little too much now. So I'm going to make it pull more weight from this chest bone than it is from the shoulder. 
think without this pulling from the shoulder, it looks a little weird. So honestly, I'm almost considering making it just fully pull from that bone instead. Let's see here. Oops. We wanted to test the shoulders. There we go. Hmm. Looks like the weights on this avatar are just very strange in general. Some of the more useful things I've seen this used for has been, for example, uh, clothing such as skirts and dresses where you want it to copy the rotation of a specific limb or bone. My suggestion is just to keep a separate copy of the body if your rotations end up screwing up to a point where hitting Control z does not work. Just keep a second copy of the avatar in the background. Copy the rotations from that bone, paste them onto the bone of the avatar that's screwed up, um, and that should fix any rotation issues you run into. Just make sure that when you are pasting those values that the constraint is not active while you do so, and that it is not locked.